So today is one of my least favorite topics, but we're going to do it anyway because you ask. Check, check, live it right. I know say I hide from the rebel farm, yeah. I know say one love, one aim, one destiny. Hiya, I don't say more. Every pass it in my shot. So what is my least favorite topic? or one of my least favorite topics. Well, that would be cost of living. Why? Because it's so subjective. What's good for one person could be horrible for someone else. Where someone could live on $1,000 and live comfortably, another person on $4,000 would still want. It's so subjective. I'll say this about Colombia in general, just kind of a rule of thumb. It's a different economy. So it's very difficult to say, for example, in the United States, you have a salary of $1,000 a week. And in Colombia, you have a salary of $300 a week. Therefore, in Colombia, they're much worse off. You see, when they're in their own economy. And so that $300 a week would equate to the same kind of life and lifestyle as a thousand dollars in the United States. Colombian paddy wagon. You wanted just some nuts and bolts, so I'm gonna run it by you. Again, this is all fairly objective, but here we go. Rent. Well, my rent runs, depending on what the exchange rate is, between 280 and 260 dollars a month. I live in one of the nicest areas of Armenia. I live in a 10-story high-rise, one block from the Bolivar, the main street. I'm right in the middle of everything. And that's what my rent is. It's a two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment with live security 24 hours a day. It's got a gymnasium. It's got a couple uh, jacuzzis, a sauna. A uh, Turkish bath. It's it's a very nice place. So in that big plastic jug you see right there in the middle of this uh, frame is something called sapicone. What it is is all kinds of different fruits, mango and banana and whatever, chopped up into little pieces with the fruit juice, and they serve that in a cup. Now if you, it's delicious. And if you go to um, a fancier place, you'll have that juice in a frozen block inside that keeps it ice cold. And if you go to yet a fancier place, you have the option of putting a scoop of ice cream in it. Now, my apartment was not furnished, so I had to get some furniture. So I got a bed, I got some chairs, I got a couch, I've got a couple armchairs, a coffee table, end table partridge in a pear tree. I got the necessities. I got a refrigerator and all of that cost me about $500. Now granted I decided to go used but and one of the criteria was who's going to deliver it because I want to screw around with that. But had I gone new it would have been maybe $1,500. That's still pretty good. So again, here's another fruit stand. This is one block from my house. And you see that's a little different version of it. Less juice, more fruit. Then you have your fruit cups. And you can actually buy fruits here and take them home. My light bill for this month runs about $26. My internet, similar. My water bill is about $21. That includes garbage. There's a whole range of things that that includes. And my gas bill is $3. Now, I use gas for the stove, which I barely use because it's just so cheap to go out. Really, the only gas I use is in the shower. Now on the utilities, keep in mind, this is Zona 5, and Zona 4, 5, and 6 
subsidizes zone one and two. I don't think three, but zone one and two. It's kind of an interesting way to help the poor without the government really getting involved. There's no middleman, there's no bureaucracy. You just pay a percentage more. If you're in four, five, and six, you're gonna pay greater percentage in each of that zone, and that extra percentage is applied to the bills of the people in zone of one and two. So, in a sense, you can say it's voluntary because you choose where to live, and you could live in zone of three and not have to worry about it. You've got uh, Venezuelans and Armenia as well, although compared to a lot of other places, um, not very many, but uh, you've got them here. Actually, if you talk to a local here, they think they're overwhelmed by them. Uh, it's truthfully really not like that. But they're here, they're struggling like everywhere, trying to find some way to make ends meet, buy food for the day. And this one's no exception. Every time she goes out to spin these uh, machetes, she drops them, so she must be new at it. Lunches. As you've seen in my videos, lunches run typically from $2 to about $3.50. $3.50, it's called Executivo. You could probably even get up to maybe four, four fifty. I mean, it's possible depending where you go. And if you go to a really nice place, you might double that. But essentially, if you just go for the standard lunch, it's going to run you two, three dollars. Most days, I pay just over two dollars. Now that includes pretty much always the choice of a soup. One will be a broth type. One will be a cream type. You get your choice of chicken, pork, or beef. Pretty much everywhere I go, it, it's, that's the standard. Always is going to come with vegetables, salad, rice, uh, usually plantain or yucca. And then it'll include some sort of natural juice. Generally, there'll be two or three types of juices to choose from. In some places I go, if there's a juice that you don't like, they'll give you a, a bottle of water for no extra charge. It's just a substitution. I like agua con gas, carbonated water, and downstairs, if they have a juice I don't like, they just give me that, and we call it even. More chicas on motorcycles. The more expensive it is, the more likely you are to get some sort of dessert. That's not a given, it's not gonna happen all the time. And when you get a dessert, it's really more of a taste. It'll be this little thing. Now, I went to the uh, Parque de la Vida has a restaurant right in the uh, front of it. And I'll show you a quick clip of that. And the dessert there was crazy good. It was like a little mochaccino pudding. I don't know what it was, but it was really good. And about three spoons and it was gone. I'm going, I could have just had that for lunch. Motorcycle chica. Now keep in mind you can also get home delivery and pretty much everything. And that's not just food, that's anything. Anything that you buy is pretty much home delivery. Now for the food, home delivery, the rate to deliver that, it goes anywhere from free to maybe a buck and a half. Popular location for locals, see it's the San Martin Hotel, San Martin. It's got a restaurant here. The hotel looks pretty nice. I never stayed there, but it always seems to be busy even when other places are slow. And it's uh, vacationers, but they're Colombian vacationers. Taxis. Now, Armenia is kind of a, we'll call it a banana. It's from north to south, it's long, but it's not very wide. So it's like a sliver. The most I paid in a taxi was north of here, down to south, part of town. And that ran me, as I recall, about 9,000 pesos, about $3. The minimum charge, 4,500 pesos, which is $1.45, $1.50, depending on the, always depending on the exchange rate. But that's a minimum charge. So even if you went three blocks and the meter says 2,000, 
you're going to pay 4500 The usual taxi charge, if I get in a cab and, and run somewhere, is typically maybe a couple dollars. Bus, 1800 pesos for the in-town bus. You can take that bus from one end to the other. If you change bus, you're going to pay 1800 pesos again. Now that same fruit cart, it's a couple blocks from my house. It's the one I like the best. Uh, they're very accommodating, nice people. And uh, I can get a slice of watermelon uh, for about 60 cents, which is my favorite. But people will get cups of uh, mixed fruits, and they'll have yogurt poured into it. Uh, which reminds me, the favorite breakfast here and pretty much in Ecuador is granola with yogurt poured in and chopped fruits. Now I was walking down the street and I saw there's these women's shirts that were actually pretty nice in a kind of a boutique store and they were on sale and they were somewhere around two to four dollars. Sneakers. My niece when she was here last time, she bought herself some sneakers. That was a, when she came here, one of the things she wanted to do was get some new sneakers in a little town she's at. I don't know if they even sell. I mean, it's a really little town from what I understand. So she bought some new Nikes. Now these were not knockoffs. These were new Nikes and they were a this year style. And she paid $38 for them. She also got two pairs of Pumas, two for one deal. Puma sneakers. Very fast. And she paid $18 a piece for those. Quite inexpensive. Now, there's non-brand, like copies, knockoffs. They've got the little Nike swoosh with a notch in it. And, it's, you know, it's kind of obvious they're Chinese knockoffs. But those things, they run maybe $5. It's a local pastry shop. TVs. 32 inch up to about 60 inch is going to run you maybe $150 to $600. Plus you can find those used. I see 32 inch used all the time in OLX or on Facebook for $75, $80. Scooters, motorbikes, we'll say 250cc and below. Two or three years old, used, it's going to run you between $500 and maybe $1,500. That's for name brand. That's not Chinese, that's Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda. Used car. Decent used car, little small, micro compact style. You can find those from thousand to three thousand dollars. Now I do want to mention, it was asked, what about taxes? Do you have taxes? Well they have a, a value added tax, it's called EVA, and it's 19 percent. He goes, oh, 19 percent, ah! Well first of all, in most things that you purchase, when you see the price, it's included in that price. So the price is the price. And when you see that the price is really low, even with that 90% added in, it's, it's really, I mean, what can you say? It's, it's, it feels like it's almost non-existent. There are exceptions. Now, if you go to the grocery store and that you look at the tape, you'll see some, there'll be a tax added at the bottom, just like you would in the U.S., like a sales tax, and it adds up. Basics are not taxed at all. So if you're getting milk and bread and eggs, cheese, those th they're not taxed at all. Shampoo will be taxed. All in all, it doesn't seem to make a big difference. So, that's my contribution to cost of living. I hope we don't have to do this for a while. As I do videos, if something comes up, I'm going to put it down. But to those who keep asking me, why don't you... I don't want to have my videos nothing but advertising prices. It bores me to tears, and for other people, you know, I think it has a similar effect. I will, from time to time, give you the highlights. And if anything special comes up, I, of course I tell you, okay, this cost me such and such. 
Okay. See you soon. Para ti, para que te divierta y podamos compartir Ello hey, danza